Now I am hoping that this video will serve as a helpful resource for you if you're trying to figure out just which colours you should add to your palette or if you just want to kind of see what colours are available by Daniel Smith or if you just want to chill and watch someone swatch then this is the video for you. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to my channel. I make weekly art tutorials, paint alongs and vlogs. And in this video, we are going to swatch the blues, the purples and the greens from the Daniel Smith collection. As you may know, I've already swatched the yellows, the oranges and the reds and I bought a 238 dot card. And in this video, we're just going to explore the second sheet of those colours. After the last video I felt inspired to create a swatch book so not only will I go and find all the pigment information but I'll actually do larger swatches so we can get a better idea of the colours included. First off we have Imperial Purple which is made up of PV19, PB29, it's a series 2 colour, excellent light fastness, low staining, granulating and semi transparent. Although it's rated as low staining, for me it did actually lean a little bit more towards medium staining because it was difficult to lift. But apart from that, it's like an absolutely beautiful colour. Next we have Quinacridone Purple and this is PV55. It's a Series 2 colour, excellent light fastness, medium staining, non-granulating and transparent. And again similar to the imperial purple absolutely beautiful it doesn't granulate as the other one does but it's just such a nice rich purple color it leans a little bit more towards red than it does blue but looking at it i think if i had to pick a purple then this one might actually be it so <laughs> so this is what i wanted to get out of cobalt violet which completely let me down but anyway Next is Ultramarine Violet, which is also PV15. It's a series one color, excellent light fastness, low staining, granulating, and transparent. One thing that was kind of um, evident when I was trying to swatch this is that it was just a bit harder to lift up the pigment. Now, I don't know if this is a limitation of the dot card itself or the paint itself, but as you can see, the swatching on the dot card on the left is a lot darker than the swatches on my separate book. So that's just something to bear in mind looking at it it just looks like an okay low pigmented violet <laughs> essentially then i tried to activate the amethyst genuine but i couldn't so i added some water i skipped to carbo carbozole violet which is what we're swatching at the moment this is a pv23 it's a series 2 color it's rated as excellent light fastness but they also state that it hasn't been formally tested it is medium staining non-granulating and semi-transparent and it is such a beautiful rich leaning towards blue purple again really really nice it is i know it says like low staining but for me i tried and tried and tried to lift this color <laughs> and it barely lifted so it actually says towards medium or high staining but that's just my opinion Next, after a few minutes, the Amethyst Genuine reactivated. It is a Series 4 Primatech colour, excellent light fastness, low staining, granulating and semi-transparent. And these Primatech colours have such unique qualities. They are made from either stones or minerals that are crushed to create these paints. And it's not uncommon for them to kind of need time to reactivate. And this is like a nice, unusual colour. I don't know what, it almost looks like a purpley grey, like something that would be nice for a shadow. And just to clarify, the fact that it's Series 4 means that it is on the more expensive end of the Daniel Smith colours. So Series 1 is the cheapest, I believe Series 5 is the most expensive. Next is Wisteria. So this is like a nice pinkish, purplish colour. It is PW6PR122. It's a Series 2 colour, very good light fastness, non-staining, semi-transparent and non-granulating. Looking at it on my swatch test, it does actually lean more towards being opaque than transparent. I know that it says it's semi-transparent, but it does almost leave like a chalky glaze over my black line. So that's something to be mindful of, especially if you like um, layering when painting. If you're enjoying this video so far then don't forget to hit the like button as it makes a massive difference to my channel and I really really appreciate it. If you want to see more content like this or you want to see more hauls um, including the haul where I got these dot cards then hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss anything and check out the rest of the channel. Now this is where my camera kind of betrayed me halfway so the next six colours we don't actually see swatched out but I will talk you through them. This is Cobalt Blue Violet. It's PV19 and PB28. It's a Series 3 colour, 
excellent light fastness, low staining, non-granulating and semi-transparent. Looking at it, I did feel that there was a bit of granulation, so I'd actually say it granulates a little bit, but that's what it's been rated as. Next, we have Moon Glow, which is PG18, PB29 and PR177. This is again quite a unique, almost like moody grey colour. You can see speckles of like blue and red coming through. It's a series 2 colour, excellent light fastness, although it states it hasn't been rated. It's low staining, granulating, as I've mentioned, and it is transparent. Next, we have a shadow violet. Now, this is PB29, PG18, and P073. It's a series two color. Light fastness is excellent, but again, not rated. It's non staining, granulating, and transparent. And this is such an interesting granulating color because you can look at it and you can see greens poking through, you can see the orange, you can see the blues. So, it's kind of mentioned on the Daniel Smith site as being able to highlight the subtleties of shadows and I can see why. Next we have Sugulite Genuine which is a Prima Tech colour series 2 excellent light fastness although not rated non-staining granulating and transparent and looking at it as hard as I tried <laughs> I was not able to transfer the colour from the actual dot card onto a piece of paper to uh, an acceptable degree. I don't know if this is an issue with the dot card or with the colour itself but I was fine I've been finding that the Prima Tech colours themselves have been a little bit temperamental again in terms of looking trying to lift it from the dot cards one thing that is stunning though with this color is the fact that it does glitter and kind of shine not necessarily for me because i don't want to work that hard for my watercolors but something worth considering next we have kyanite genuine which is again another primatech color and it's kind of like a moody gray blue color it's a series four color excellent light fastness granulating and transparent and yeah again stunning and again it's kind of got that little glitter to it which is really beautiful and then we have indigo now i must say before i saw the color that comes after this i was like i need to buy indigo i mean it is so rich so beautiful it's like everything i want from Payne's gray and more <laughs> let me actually give you the information it's a pb60 pbk6 series one color excellent light fastness although not rated medium staining although i think it's actually high staining non-granulating and transparent and it is such a nice and stunning color like dark beautiful rich and then you also get mayan dark blue which is pb82 i don't know which of the two i would actually pick it, it's quite tricky um it's a series two color very good light fastness low staining non-granulating and semi-transparent and the reason that i'm stuck between the two is i think the mayan blue is maybe leaning a little bit more like towards warmish blue and the indigo is a little bit cooler but both of them are just so stunning like really nice blues i never fully appreciated how different blues are until i did these swatches but this is indanthronone blue which is pb60 again a nice rich a warm blue it is a series 2 color rated as excellent light fastness although not formally tested medium staining non-granulating and transparent and again just a beautiful dark deep rich blue Next, we have a Solidite Genuine, which is a Prima Tech color. It's a Series 4 color. Light fastness is rated as excellent, low staining, granulating, and semi transparent. Next, I tried to activate Lapis Lazuli Genuine, which is a Prima Tech color. That didn't work, so then I skipped to the next color, which is Ultramarine Blue. It is PB29, Series 1 colour, excellent light fastness, medium staining, granulating and transparent. This is often seen as like a staple in watercolour palettes, not necessarily with Daniel Smith, but just with brands in general because it's such a good mixing colour. It's just a staple nice blue to have. It isn't like groundbreaking or to me incredibly special, but it's versatile. You can use it and it works well. Similarly, French Ultramarine, which is also PB29. Looking at the swatches that I have, the only clear difference I can see is that the French Ultramarine looks slightly warmer. It's a series two color, excellent light fastness, medium staining, granulating and transparent. Essentially exactly the same as above, apart from the fact that it's more expensive than the Ultramarine Blue in the uh, Daniel smith set 
Having given the Lapis Lazuli Genuine more time, I then went back to swatch it. It is a Primatech Color Series 5, <laughs> so even more expensive. Excellent light fastness, granulating, non-staining and transparent. And it is a pretty color, it's just incredibly difficult to activate in these dot cards. This is Cobalt Blue, which is PB28. It's a Series 3 color, excellent light fastness, low staining, granulating, and semi transparent. It is like a pretty sky blue, but I'm trying to avoid cobalt, so this isn't a color that I'm going to be investing in. Next, we have a Phthalo Blue Green Shade PB15. It's a Series 1 color, excellent light fastness, high staining, non granulating, and transparent. I always find it amazing that colors that can be so vibrant are also transparent and it's true on my swatch it was actually transparent now this is a beautiful blue especially if you like mixing dark greens but I do find that on its own it's almost too bright to be natural especially if you're doing landscape so I do tend to have to tone it down with other colors or just water it down quite a lot Next we have Verdita Blue. It's made up of PB28, PB36 and PW4. It's a Series 2 colour, excellent light fastness, low staining, slightly granulating and semi-transparent though leaning more towards the transparent side and it's almost like a pastelish blue. Next is Lavender. I was wondering why it was with the blues and not with the purples but when I swatched it out it became clear. It's made up of PB29, PW6 and PV15. It's a series 2 color excellent light fastness low staining like very low staining granulating and semi-transparent now I couldn't see much of the granulation perhaps because of the paper that I was working on but what I could see is that it's just a nice um, again pastel like really pastel blue Next we have Thalo Blue Red Shade, which is a warmer version of the green shade. It's a, made up of PB15, it's a Series 1 colour, excellent light fastness, high staining, non-granulating and transparent. And again, I can just imagine making beautiful purples with this. Following that we have Prussian Blue, which is PB27, and again it's like a deep deep a really nice deep blue it is made up of pb27 it's a series one color light fastness is excellent medium staining granulating and transparent and to be honest it's not massively granulating Next we have another Primatech colour which is Mayan Blue Genuine. It is a Series 3 colour, very good light fastness, low staining, granulating and transparent and stands true. It's like a really, it almost reminds me of mountains, like it's a nice unusual blue. As stunning as it is, it took quite a bit of work to reactivate, so I have to just keep going back and forth. I don't know if this is something that would be reflected if you added this to like a pan set. So if you're trying to make pans out of these watercolours, whether it would then be difficult to reactivate again. So that's something worth bearing in mind, but it is a nice colour. Following that, we have Cerulean Blue, which again was really hard to reactivate i don't know if it's the paper if it's a dot card or the paint itself it's made up of pb35 series 3 color excellent light fastness non-staining which is true granulating and it is semi-transparent then we have cerulean blue chromium which is made up of pb36 it's a series 2 color excellent light fastness low staining granulating and semi-transparent Following that we have manganese blue hue made up of PB15. It's such a nice light blue, like a sky blue. It's a series one color, very good light fastness, medium staining, granulating and transparent. We then have cobalt teal blue, which is PG50. It's a series two color. Light fastness is rated as excellent, although not formally tested. It is non-staining, which is again true, granulating and semi-transparent. And it almost looks like an Caribbean ocean blue. Like that's what it reminds me of. Then we have a Fuchsite Genuine, which is a Primatech colour, which shimmers and again just reminds me of like Caribbean waters. It is a Series 2 colour, excellent light fastness, non-staining, non-granulating and transparent. Um, or at least rated as transparent, but I'd actually say it's slightly semi-transparent. You can see a shimmer over it. Next, we have two stunning colours. The first being Phthalo Turquoise. It's made up of PB15 and PG36. It's a Series 1 colour, excellent light fastness, high staining, non-granulating and transparent. And it is so 
beautiful like such a nice color that I think could be used for ocean after that we have quite similarly ultramarine turquoise which is maybe slightly more muted it's made up of pb29 pg7 it's a series one color excellent light fastness low staining granulating and transparent and i know that i said that i am not into granulating colors but i'm telling you now there's just something about all these swatches that we've done of late that is starting to change my mind <laughs> I'm actually seeing like the beauty of the granulating colors and between the two of these it would be tough but I feel like I would maybe lean a little bit more towards ultramarine turquoise because it looks like a little bit more of a natural color it's just uh, both stunning next we have cobalt turquoise which is pb36 it is a series 3 color excellent light fastness non-staining granulating and semi-transparent i've already come to terms with the fact that i'm not really going to use cobalt colors so we move on <laughs> we then have sb turquoise genuine which is a prima tech color it's a series 5 color excellent light fastness non-staining slightly granulating and semi-transparent Amazonite Genuine is a Prima Tech color. It is Series 2, excellent light fastness, non staining, non granulating, and transparent. And again, really nice green, like aqua green. As in, in my head, it reminds me of aqua green. <laughs> Following that, we have Blue Appetite Genuine, which to be honest, dries to almost like a grey. <laughs> <laughs> it is a prima tech color it's series four excellent light fastness slightly granulating um non-staining and it is transparent then we have lunar blue which if i didn't know any better i would have said was a prima tech color but it is not and it granulates in such a cool and interesting way the more i look at it the more i'm like wow it's made up of pbk11 and pb5 it's a series 2 color excellent light fastness low staining granulating and semi-transparent and when you look at it you can see like browns poking through and black and you can see the blue it's just such an interesting color Next, we have Cascade Green, which is again mesmerizing. It's made up of PBR7 and PB15. It's a series one color, excellent light fastness, medium staining, granulating, and semi transparent. You can really see like browns, blues, and greens poking through. And I don't know if that makes sense in terms of the pigments, but when I look at the color that I've swatched out, those are the colors that I see. Then we have Jadeite Genuine. So this is a Prima Tech color. Series 4, excellent light fastness, non-staining, granulating and semi-transparent and again stunning. If I was to get a Prima Tech colour, it would probably be this one. <laughs> and again, I love painting florals, botanicals and landscapes, so that's probably why. Next we have Viridian. This is made up of PG18. It's a Series 2 colour, excellent light fastness, non-staining, granulating and transparent. And for some reason, this was harder to activate than it should have been so i wasn't able to get the full depth of the color across and i also this was unfortunately one of the colors that had like next to no paint on it so i wasn't again able to get the full extent of the color usually what i've seen in other brands is that it's a bit of a deeper darker green but what i seem to have gotten uh, is quite a light pastel green and again i think it's just because i didn't have enough paint so we will take that one with a pinch of salt next is diopside genuine which is a Prima Tech color, series three, excellent light fastness, very low staining, granulating and transparent. And again, granulates in such a nice way. You can only see one color, but you see like lots of darks and light greens. Then we have Phthalo Green Blue Shade, which is made up of PG7. It's a series one color, excellent light fastness, high staining, non-granulating and transparent. And like the Phthalo Blues, it's like a punchy color that's so nice to look at, but perhaps maybe a bit too bright for like real life. <laughs> like I basically tend to tone it down a little bit by either adding water or adding a complementary color but I wouldn't use it on its own as it is. Then we have Prussian green which I didn't even know was a thing but it is so nice like a nice dark green. It's made of PB27 and PY97. It's a series one color, excellent light fastness, medium staining, granulating and semi-transparent although to be honest the granulation is minimal. Then we have Terra Verde, which is PBR7, PG18. It's a series one color, 
excellent light fastness, non-staining, granulating and semi-transparent. And to be perfectly honest, this was a difficult to activate like most of the paint did not shift at all and I have kind of been warned that it can behave in the same way that cobalt violet behaves at times which is basically not in a nice way so this isn't a color that I'm going to invest in but it was interesting to swatch. I can reactivate cobalt green pale so I added some water swatched some other colors and then came back to it. Then we have cobalt green which is PG50 it's a series 3 color excellent light fastness although not formally tested it is low staining granulating and semi-transparent then we have spring green which is like a bright almost fluorescent green it's made up of py151 pg36 and py53 i assume the yellow pigments is why it's so bright it's a series 3 color excellent light fastness low staining non-granulating and semi-transparent then we have permanent green this is made up of py3 pg7 and it's a series one color very good light fastness low staining non-granulating and semi-transparent followed by cobalt green pale now again this is a color that i almost bore a hole into the paper trying to reactivate <laughs> left it with water and it just would not budge it is pg19 it's a series 3 color excellent light fastness non-staining granulating and transparent and again i like it's just a color that i'm going to avoid i don't need to be told it's just not for me then we have phalo yellow green which is made up of py3 and pg36 again like a really luminescent bright green it's a series 1 color very good light fastness medium staining although to be perfectly honest i was able to lift it up quite a lot so i'd actually say it's low staining non-granulating and transparent again it's quite a bright bright green then we have permanent green which is made up of py3 and pg7 it is a series one color very good light fastness medium staining non-granulating and transparent phalo green yellow shade which is slightly calmer than the blue shade that we saw earlier it is a series two color excellent light fastness high staining and as is normal for the phalo colors non-granulating and transparent now all the greens that we've talked about thus far i think from terra verde all the way down to here i wouldn't normally like get i like mixing my own greens i don't think there's they're almost too bright for what i would normally use hooker's green is maybe the exception that i would consider as well as the prussian green that i mentioned earlier because they're pretty but let's continue hooker's green is made up of pg36 py3 py150 and p48 i didn't realize that it had this many pigments before but it's a series one color very good light fasteners low staining non-granulating and semi-transparent and it looks like a barn door convenience green so i wouldn't mind having this in my palette then we have sap green which is made up of pg7 p 48 and py150 i actually have this sap green it's a nice green it's a series 2 medium staining excellent light fastness granulating and transparent and the granulation is only slight then we have serpentine genuine which is a prima tech color it's a series 4 color excellent light fastness non-staining granulating and semi-transparent and the granulations you can see like browns and lighter greens peeking through which is again quite nice then there's chromium green oxide which is made up of pg17 it is a series one color excellent light fastness low staining granulating and it's rated as opaque but it doesn't seem that opaque to me but perhaps if i layered it more and more and more and more then i would see that kind of quality but to me it looks semi-transparent then there's green appetite genuine which wow so stunning so many different colors when you look at it it's a prima tech color series three excellent light fastness low staining granulating and semi-transparent and again when you look at it like for one it's like a deep dark green and then another thing is like you see bits of red bits of yellow bits of light green just poking through when you look at it next is rare green earth which doesn't have any pigment information it's a series 2 color excellent light fastness non-staining granulating and transparent not a massive fan of this color <laughs> to be perfectly honest it just looks like a greeny gray that's the best way i can describe it then there's deep sap green which 
again I'll, maybe i like darker colors but it's made up of pb27 py3 and po48 i never fully appreciated how helpful po48 can be when mixing colors but now i'm getting a better idea of that it's a series two color very good light fastness medium staining non-granulating and transparent and again it's just like a nice deep dark green then there is a praline green which is made up of pbk 31 it's a series 2 color rated as excellent light fastness although not formally tested medium staining non-granulating and semi-transparent and again just a nice dark green more so probably more so for like shadows and mixing than for actually like florals but it's definitely a color that i like and then last but not least, we have Undersea Green. This is made up of PB29, PO48, again, PY150, again. It's a Series 1 colour, excellent light fastness, medium staining, granulating and semi-transparent. And I must say, I'm like getting won over to the granulating colours. <laughs> I never saw the benefit of it before, but now as I'm looking, the colours that tend to create the most interest to me are the granulating ones. My only question is, will they complement each other nicely will they um will they complement other colors nicely will it work nicely in a piece and i'm honestly considering experimenting to see if it does i had so many favorites that i want to look into more the imperial purple the quinacridon violet not purple <laughs> the indigo the mayan dark blue the prussian blue and then paradoxically the cobalt teal blue like i just want this color but not as cobalt <laughs> manganese blue hue because it's like a perfect sky blue ultramarine turquoise because of the clear seas prussian green and lunar blue both of them love them and then green appetite genuine so there were just so many colors that i could pick just to give you another close-up i actually went back and tried to lift all the colours to see which ones were actually lifting and which ones were not. But those are essentially the purples, the blues and the greens and I hope that getting this closer look at them will help you in deciding what colours you want to add to your palette. If you are interested in having a PDF version of this then please let me know down below in the comments and I'll make it available to those who subscribe to the newsletter. But if you have made it this far into the video you are a real MVP and I really 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 appreciate you it took a lot of work to make this video and the fact that you are still listening lets me know that it was worth it and that hopefully it was helpful so if you've made it this far then please let me know by telling me what your favorite purples blues or greens are down below in the comments not necessarily daniel smith but any brand that you like thank you so much for watching don't forget to check out the other videos if you're interested in seeing the whole daniel smith range or if you want my final verdicts of whether you can save money by avoiding the dot cards or save money by buying the dot cards and definitely check out the videos that are going to follow thank you so much for watching and i will see you next week bye